Today is October 16, 2014. I am Janine Kickert of the Lafayette Historical Society Oral History Project. My son Patrick will assist me with the interview. Now, what is your full name and the spelling, and do you have a nickname? My full name is Patricia Nancy Whitehead Went. And P A T R I C I A Nancy Whitehead Went W E N D T. Very good. Do you have a nickname, Max? I do, Patio and Patrish. Uh, when and where were you born? I was born in Lake Merritt, which I like to tell people. <laughs> Actually, Merritt <laughs> Hospital in Oakland, California. <laughs> now, how long did you live in Lafayette? Oh, let's see. We started out uh, living in Walnut Creek and then moved back to Oakland and then finally moving back to Lafayette on acreage that my grandfather had purchased. Four acres for himself and then my father purchased one acre in the Happy Valley Pine Lane area of Lafayette uh, in the late 1940s. And then I married in 1960 and moved away from Lafayette. Why did you and your family choose to live in Lafayette? Uh, they wanted to get back to the country again. In Walnut Creek they had some outbuildings. We raised chickens and there was uh, a horse area, arena, but it went unused. But there were walnut trees and land and that's what they wanted again. But. Um, my mother was lonely. Her, her mother had passed away, so they moved back to Oakland. And my father always wanted again to live in the country. We had walnut trees and a home acre of land, and he built our home there. A very nice home. Very <laughs> nice. Um, what do you remember about Lafayette when you first came or were growing up here? Say the house and neighborhood, transportation, school? Uh, yes. The house I helped uh, by gathering up shingles and stacking them. That was my part in building the house. And um, I loved Lafayette because you could jump dishes, ditches. <laughs> you can hide in waist high mustard plants. You had dirt clawed fights, horseshoes, cheddar ball, playing in the creek, often getting poison oak, climbing the golden hills. Uh, family vacations at nearby Tahoe or Oakland Camp near Yosemite, playing horses, uh, joining Girl Scouts, earning badges, and one day on a hike in Happy Valley, I found a fossil, which my dad took to UC Berkeley uh, Paleontology, and it remains there today. They declared it a fossilized turtle. Really? <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I remember doing. That's very, very nice. Do you have any siblings? Yes, I have two siblings, two um, sisters. Two sisters. All and right. they went to Akalani's High School, as did I. Are they older than you? Or no, you? I'm the oldest. And then my next sister, Joan, is four years younger. And my next sister, Vicki, is seven years younger than I. All right. Um, how did you celebrate the holidays? The holidays yes. uh, in my cooking. Interesting yes. Uh, yes. Of those oh, walnuts. yes. Well, Good preparing mother. walnuts. <laughs> Husking them, getting our hands all brown, mm -hmm. and uh, then roasting them, making fudge, always having our grandparents come or family members. And did they uh, live big in dinner. Berkeley? Did they, they lived in Berkeley, oh, yes, oh, and El Cerrito. Oh, For a while they lived. Uh, right below us in a house that my father got from barracks. He and another, another man made the house for my oh, grandfather yeah. with uh, barracks. It was unlike our house, but my grandmother was ill at the time, and so they did move back into Berkeley, El Cerrito Same. area. And my grandfather remarried okay. when she passed away. All right. Um, let's see here. Do you what about school? What activities were you doing? <laughs> so, okay, let's see. Um, 
I think I was just a typical girl in at Vallecito, uh, the grammar school where the Bentley School is now. And I remember, though, probably me being a little mature, immature, because I loved horses. And we go out and play horses, you know, clapping our hands on our hips and running around the mm -hmm. playground. You needed a horse. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I did from <laughs> an early age. <laughs> and um, uh, But I was a fairly good student. I liked having Mrs. Shipley, the fourth grade teacher, and also Mrs. Summers, who taught fifth and sixth grade to me, um, read from books, and we could rest with our heads on the table and use our imaginations. And I don't know if the children do that now as much. <laughs> it was a quiet time, which I think is very important. Uh, although my daughter and daughter-in-law have homeschooled their children. So it's quite different. Um, very different. Yes. Yes. Um, let's see. So then um, I went to like a Christian catechism at Lafayette Grammar School. It was across the street where the Masonic Lodge is now. It oh, yeah. used to be a church, and that was important then. We also had a health education teacher that taught us about the birds and the bees. Um, I had Mrs. Meisenheimer, who was a wonderful teacher, and uh, I enjoyed learning. And that's when, though, I had one of the first horse shows in Lafayette. Uh, that summer, uh, right before going in as a freshman to Akalani. You, you had one of the first horse shows. Tell us about that. Well, um, it was the product of my girlfriend, Carolyn, and Diane. Uh, we just planned it. We wanted to have um, boots. We couldn't have horses. Uh, well, Diane and I did not have horses of our own. Carolyn did. And... Um, we just wanted to put on something good. And my uh, father tractored the land in back of our home into a ring. It was very, uh, you know, rough looking. Some of the other horse shows that were held in Happy Valley were in fancy estates. But this had a lot of the good riders come. And so it was very successful. And our neighbor, Henry J. Kaiser, did come to that too. So it was fun and it was written up in the... Uh, Lafayette Sun in 1953. So we have the what, 1953 yes, Sun here that we could see okay. and read about that, couldn't we? Okay, All yes. Right. Or I can give you a, a picture. <laughs> <laughs> um, also now... Oh, no, high school you wanted yes, to know? Yes, oh, yes. Let's see, I um, really enjoyed CSF when I was a freshman. And um, studying Spanish, I like that. I uh, held off on algebra for a year because uh, I guess I'm not the best in math. Although becoming a real estate agent later on in life, I had to mm -hmm. use that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Simple math, which I did learn, applied math. But um, then I was chosen for what is known as the modern dance group at Akalani's, and that's a very high honor. Uh, Miss H um, was known as a very good teacher of that. And we put on performances called the Musants in the spring and then a Christmas program as well with a cappella groups and so forth. So that took up a lot of my time with practices in the afternoon, uh, every Tuesday afternoon as well as the dance class, and then practices for the performances where we would go up and fix dinner up in the home ec room for ourselves. Then we run through the halls down to the gym <laughs> to do our practice and then come home late at, at night. So it was wonderful to get to know the elders, uh, juniors and seniors uh, in the dance group. And she held us to a high standard. We could, we had to get mostly B's. Yeah. <laughs> A's or B's. Nothing was, other than that was very uh, acceptable. <laughs> so it did take a lot of time. It did. It, but it uh, was good for you. It was and very kept good. You, uh, busy, yes. you know, so that. Uh, yes. And then in my senior course. year, I was a pom pom girl, and mm -hmm. so we would practice and lose our breath <laughs> at the high spirited rallies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so but you it was were very good shape <laughs> then by being a dancer. That's true. Yes, That's true. I'm so, not so sure that would have happened. Uh, but if I were not, because hand in hand. it does. 
being a dancer and yes uh, in fact I think most of the uh, pom-pom girls and cheerleaders were uh, dancing in the class if not the, the yes. dance group yes so, so that was high school and, and uh, after high school that summer is when the Lafayette Freeway Fiesta happened <laughs> you actually want to learn about that. What was your experience about it? Um, it was wonderful because uh, Miss Vera Richardson, the Dean of Girls, chose three of us to be princesses, and then we would get a win a modeling course yes. for the one who got the princess title. <laughs> oh. But we went out and had dinners and luncheons with local politicians. Mm -hmm. And we learned how to wait until the man opened the door for you to get out. You know, I can remember trying to get out quickly, and <laughs> you were in someone the room said, "No, no, wait <laughs> for him to do it." And so we laugh about that. <laughs> oh, well, that was a very exciting time of your life, I'm sure, wasn't it? It was an exciting time. And did you want me to mention? It is on the DVD that I've uh, given to the Historical Society, but. Uh, Jerry Brown, the son of the to be governor, Edmund Brown, was sitting in the convertible with us. Oh. Uh, the day that we officially opened the freeway. That's a historical picture, <laughs> it definitely. Is. Yes, it is. I wanted to ask you how you went to school uh, from Pine Lane to Aklani Street. Oh, yes. Walk, right? I did not have a car, and I didn't have friends nearby that had a car, so I always took the school bus. And we would walk uh, up to where the Potter's Wheel was, uh, and the El Nido Rancho that they tore yeah. down uh, was nearby, and wait for the bus there. And there were big acacia trees, I can remember, mm -hmm. there, just lovely. Mm -hmm. Did uh, Did you go to movies? Do you remember? Oh, yes. You were a fan of? Yes, in the Park in the Theater. Park I, in theater. fact, I almost my mother had wanted me, wanted me to get a job, and so without her knowing, I went down to the Park Theater and they hired me as a ticket person. And I went home and told her, and she said, "Absolutely not! I will not take you there." So I had to say, "I'm sorry, I can't do this." And I went back to that's another thing I did. I worked for Mrs. Lockman, who had a nursery school in Happy Valley, and I worked for her after school taking care of children. She was a German lady and very uh, official <laughs> caretaker. So after school, yes. um, or grad graduating from high school, yes. uh, what did you do with your life then? Um, well, I had wanted to go to UC Berkeley, but I had wanted to join a sorority like my other friends would. and. My family told me I could not, so I just didn't want to go then. So I went to DBC, and uh, there I did some modern dance for their programs, mm -hmm. their teas. And actually, Catherine Ross, she was an actress. I don't know if you remember that name. Yes. She um, was a dance student as well oh, at the college. Mm -hmm. Mom would remember so. from uh, Butch Cassidy and the Sun. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh, she had a 19-inch waist, I remember that, <laughs> which I didn't, but I did a lot less than I am today. <laughs> <laughs> we were all <laughs> in but those I, days as a teenager, definitely. Right. Um, so then in the summertime, uh, I became a dental assistant. Uh, a UC professor at the dental school hired and trained me in Berkeley. Uh-huh. And it was good. It was a wonderful experience. So and I did everything. Billing. It was for a year. And when I, I left to get married, uh, well, first I went to San Francisco State for a year. Mm. And then my uh, husband-to-be said, uh, well, why don't you continue, go back to work if you want. And so I did. Well, I was pregnant. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then stopped and was a mother... Uh, and homemaker uh, full time when my children were born. Was your husband from Lafayette? No, he was from Diablo, the Diablo Country Club area. Oh, yes, yes, yes. All right. I so, was just wondering if he grew up in Lafayette as well. No, he no. went to San Ramon High, mm -hmm. and uh, we lived in Diablo in a guest house when we were first married. Mm 
And so that was a wonderful place to be. And I had tea uh, when I had my little daughter. And we would go up to the post office there, walk up the country club, get our mail, and then um, come back and have tea with Mrs. Morey. She was in her 90s and hard of hearing. And she was the oldest living resident of Diablo. She would come out on the train from Berkeley, where her husband was a dentist. And uh, so she lived there in the summer house, uh, but then as her real house. Interesting <laughs> area as well. It is that very one, interesting. The, uh, the post office and everything yes. like that is still yes. there, isn't it? Yes. And I think it's still operating. As I'm not office. sure. I not? haven't been up there. Mm -hmm. But uh, Mrs. Stott was the post mistress for a long time. And that was the exercise that I would take going along the 17th green, going up to the post office and coming back with my baby daughter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I wanted to ask you, what are the biggest changes that you've seen in Lafayette, you know, your life here? Well, let me see. I like the way it stayed for quite a long time. It wasn't known as a gas station town like Danville. It but wasn't. the freeway changed it a lot, I believe. Uh, but still, you'd have the dime stores and it, it, more divis diversity than Danville. Mm -hmm. And um, let's I'm see. saying when when I was growing up in the 1960s, of course, Lafayette was known as the gas station town. There was a oh, gas was? station on every corner. Yes, in the 60s, right? Yes. Well, that was the same as Danville then, mm -hmm. because that's when I lived at Diablo Country Club. Mm -hmm. So. Because I think you, you got the traffic from both uh, the San Ramon mm. Valley area and the Walnut Creek and Concord area yes. and funneling through what would be 24. Yes. And so there were just, uh, became a gas station boom that was a bit controversial at the time. Mm. And, and most of them are, are gone. That's now just mm. a few stations, more mm. reasonable number. Well, in the 19... Uh, 50s, I became a member of Lafayette Arunda Presbyterian Church when I was 13 and meeting in the Park Theater. Really? It was before the big sanctuary yeah. was mm -hmm. built. Mm -hmm. And uh, Pastor Carl Thomas was so wonderful, a pastor. I loved him teach mm -hmm. and explain the love of God mm -hmm. and Jesus Christ. <laughs> well, so uh, I would go back to the Lafayette Arunda Church and Indeed, that's where I was married in 1960, in the fellowship hall. They mm -hmm. didn't have the main sanctuary mm -hmm. at that that's time. That's our church. Mm -hmm. that, yes. We live just down the street from there in the oh. Hidden Valley. <laughs> oh, you live in Hidden Valley. Yeah. Oh, great. Well, see, I remember the Lazy K in Hidden yeah. Valley. And friends' homes, you know, I remember that more about Lafayette than the actual business Oh, I see. Section. Sure. So, you know, I would go to places I like. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing, though, is I remembered the Henry Kaiser estate on Timothy as a wonderful house with a waterfall and the entry and a walk in freezer room and mm -hmm. gorgeous pool and cabana. And later on, it was destroyed because of termites. Oh. And I was so. Grateful for my little townhouse, which I lived in later at the time. You wouldn't imagine so, that that would have gone to a point no. being in Kaiser Estate. I know. To let that be destroyed. Run away, yes. run, run away with termites. Yes. I never knew that. I wonder mm -hmm. if they realize here, do they? Well, we'll find I out. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, the biggest changes you've seen in Lafayette because you... Um, I'm sure you don't come down here as, as often, but yeah. there there's parking problems. <laughs> oh, yes. I've gotten a ticket just for running in for a minute to Chico's. <laughs> <laughs> and you can't even find parking places easily in yes. Lafayette. So that's one certainly some of the big changes yes. in the population. It's exploding, mm -hmm. I think, in Lafayette. Mm -hmm. Do you miss anything? About the way Lafayette used to be? Well, yes, of course, the uh, countryside, but in um, riding, you know, the freeway took away 
the lovely writing that I would do with Aubrey Dayton, who came out from a private school in San Francisco to stay with her parents, who lived across from Heather Farm at a beautiful ranch house where John Muir is right now. And, um, you know, we'd love to go riding there, uh, and we would ride up all on the hills in Lafayette. And we'd, see, we'd go on moonlight rides and look over at, to the reservoir with no oh, freeway there. You, ha you had a lot of freedom <laughs> there. Freedom, then. yes. Freedom then, and oh, yes. uh, able to see all of the beauty mm -hmm. of, of the... Uh, and we would play outdoors when we were young. We'd go explore creeks. And everything was safe. Everything was safe. Yes. And I don't think we appreciated that. <laughs> no. Our parents would just let us go, and then we'd come back. Later for dinner. <laughs> of course, everyone knew everyone in the neighborhood. It was not like you know you may know Strangers. one or two neighbors, but there's a lot of people that you know nothing about. But know but them. at that time, we knew everyone in the neighborhood, or or at least knew of them. Not necessarily that closely, but we we knew that there were, wasn't anyone dangerous around or potentially dangerous. Yes. So do you? It's the where do you see Lafayette going in the future? Well, <laughs> I'm not in on the act of planning, but I hope that Lafayette Historical Society <laughs> will remind the political powers that be uh, what a beautiful town it was, and hopefully will continue in some respects in the quote-unquote old way. <laughs> way. So, um, do you have any other questions, Patrick? Well, just... Uh, because I also attended uh, Valacito and Dacalani's, but most people have forgotten about Valacito, certainly the contemporaries around here. And just curious um, about uh, how it was like in the uh, the early days of Valacito before it um, uh, became cut off by the freeway, essentially. And yes, uh, well, it was a quiet area, but safe. You could walk to school. I could. <laughs> so you were pretty close I by. I was close yeah. by. And so I could walk to school. But um, I don't know. Our teachers were so impressive. And our studies were important. And our smaller groups, or maybe Girl Scouts, which I was a member of a troop with that. Um, and, of course, we had animals at home. Um, I did. So, no, well, a dog or a cat. <laughs> and they lived yes. together, dogs and cats. Yes, they did. <laughs> That's, uh, what is this, a biblical time? Oh, um, well, yes, <laughs> uh, the lion lays down with the lamb. Uh -huh. It was really a wolf, though. It should mm. be translated in scripture. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Uh-huh. No. It's something that, that shouldn't be, so we're, <laughs> when you get concerned... <laughs> <laughs> so if you can think of anything, well, having, you know, I think I want to. Uh, I've read. incorporated in my answers and talk with you uh, what I had written. A group of our girls, fourteen of us, has decided we wanted to write about some of our experiences with each other and how our lives interacted. And so, uh, some of the things that I've told you about myself are in this. And I, of course, was looking at it to make sure that I'd have something to say to you. And um, I think that probably your interview of me is quite sufficient. Although I want to let everyone know I will be 75 in two weeks. So that's important to know my age. I think you didn't ask me that. And, <laughs> and happy 1939. <laughs> And well, your, your, these friends are from Lafayette as well. Uh, could yes. we have, make a copy of this and put that well, in the uh I'll tell you, the book is not Lafayette. out yet. And mm -hmm. the person who's been gathering all the information is finally getting it together in a flash drive for us. But it won't be available for about a year. Mm -hmm. All right. And we really did it for our children. So our children would know how we felt maybe coming that first day in high school and not having a social group and sort of eating quietly on a bench in the corner of the lunchroom, you know? It takes a, ch a while to get acclimated, and that's why my Christian faith was important to me as a young girl. 
because I could count on uh, his being with me and, you know, if I didn't have instant friendship. But when you think from going from that, this has always amazed me, that lunchroom experience, which I remember, to having a group 60 years later of uh, all the popular or so-so people now, a group of 14 of us, you know, and we still get together with a class above, 1956. You blossomed. <laughs> That's Didn't right. You? Well, we realized the importance of sharing our lives yes. and treasure our experiences together. Did you know Reverend Little at the Presbyterian? Oh, I know uh, that came after when I was in Danville Presbyterian. I see. All right. Danville. And I also went to Bible Study Fellowship for a long time. Mm -hmm. And Ms. Johnson started that at Lafayette Arundo Presbyterian. But then it went on to Concord and Danville. And mm -hmm. Have you been up to the church recently? Uh, it has so many new buildings and it's just amazing. It's a really? beautiful mm -hmm. church. I, and of course you've heard of the, the org. You have heard the organ. Yes, of course. I love yeah. that about it because Danville gave up its organ a while ago. Mm -hmm. Once in a while, they will come back and play one of the. And I love to hear that music. Mm -hmm. Yes. You know, I enjoy the new music too. But uh, being a dancer with Arinda, the dancer circle in Arinda, and liturgical dancing, I have danced at Lafayette Arinda mm -hmm. and before some of their groups. I see. Um, so. Wow. It is sort of the community center for the Hidden Valley area. Yes. Going on socially as well. It's yes. It's a major, major site that mm -hmm. isn't in Lafayette itself. Mm -hmm. Many well, organizations mm -hmm. uh, have their meetings mm -hmm. there. Yes. We went to a book uh, organization, remember, with yes. Cheryl yeah. and so on. Reading Club. Reading club, yes. So they they use use it all the time. Mm -hmm. I did. I was confirmed in the Christian faith at Our Savior's Lutheran Church on Carroll mm -hmm. Lane in mm -hmm. Lafayette. Mm -hmm. Went to confirmation every Saturday for a year, and there were uh, two gals uh, that are in the group now that we went to confirmation together oh. in, in the eighth grade. Yeah, Closer so, than sisters, probably. That's right. right. <laughs> uh, and then I don't think you mentioned, or I mentioned, um, Dr. Sidney Garfield was our neighbor, as well as Henry J. Kaiser. And Dr. Garfield developed Kaiser Permanente mm -hmm. along mm -hmm. with a Mr. Lafayette Kaiser. And President. Then, yes, and he designed the first hospital, like a patio mm -hmm. hospital in Walnut Creek, where mm -hmm. and I was in it once for an operation <laughs> where... Your guests could just come and visit you through the sliding glass door. Mm -hmm. And then it was like a little, you looked out on a patio. And you had very one. familiar. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, but they were wonderful neighbors. They had a swimming pool. My family did not. And we could go over there anytime and learn uh, and swim. I learned how to dive from Mrs. Kaiser. Well, there uh, were a lot of uh, very wonderful people from Lafayette yes. to, you know, all through the past. Yes. I mean, it's a great place. Helen Garfield had gone to school with my mother and also uh, Allie Kaiser. So mm -hmm. there was kind of that tie in there. Mm -hmm. But, uh, no, it just really well, name recognition. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. um, and I mentioned about Dr. George Dayton, our medical director. I believe I did for 30 years. Um, and he was the uh, father of my friend Aubrey, who would come out and ride horses mm -hmm. with me. And he let us look at three operations for my biology class. Mm -hmm. We went in, and uh, we had to wash up and put masks on and got to watch three operations. What an uh, experience. It was. I did it for my biology uh, class. And course got a good grade. I had a cutting needle uh, in the report <laughs> from the operation. <laughs> Is there anything uh, else in here? Uh, I just remember taking a bus uh, to Walnut Creek Creamery and then we'd go out to the ranch to ride in, on Ignatia Valley Road. All right. And I learned to drive out there too. Um, 
Well, speaking of horses, your horses were near, where were they stable? Oh, yes. Uh, they were, <laughs> I didn't tell you that story. They were on the land behind our home on my grandfather's oh. three acres. They had a well on it, and he had a huge vegetable garden on his acre. But there was a fence up, and they pastured there. And then when the pasture wore down, I had to pay for hay for my babysitting money, and I couldn't keep up with the horses. They started to eat the fence. <laughs> And so Dad said, I'm sorry, Patricia, but we're going to have to give the horses back to my friend. He gave, he gave us two, one trained and one that was would bite you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that was difficult. But uh, I could join 4-H and all that while I had the horse and then that my wonderful it. friendship uh, with was, Aubrey. So. Now, now you learn about being eaten out of house and home. Yes. <laughs> that was a real farm or ranch. <laughs> or plantation. <laughs> or whatever. Let's go. No, actually, we made it into one. Like, my dad tried to construct a lean-to for the horses, but he really tried to please uh, me, but, uh, and I appreciated that about him. And I'd go in and watch him work on his cars, like his Jaguar. He was very good at that. Mm -hmm. And have talks with my daddy o in the garage. <laughs> so. All right, so I think that's pretty much what I remember. Um, there were all sorts of things, of course, that happened that uh, comes to mind. You think, oh, I should have said that. <laughs> You can always add. Oh, okay. You know, well, if you ever want to, or <laughs> type it and send it to know. us, and we be, we'll put it with the rest of the, of material. the material. Um, I might say I was glad to end that I was a homemaker for the years for my children. My son is now a two star general mm -hmm. and a commanding general mm -hmm. in the Army Special Forces. Mm -hmm. And my daughter, of course, homeschooled her daughters. and. Uh, my granddaughter went to Oxford this summer for uh, getting her master's degree in international politics. Mm -hmm. So, and and the other one is a horse trainer. The other granddaughter and married to a horse trainer, and oh. they're Christian horse trainers. <laughs> so you see how your life reaches out <laughs> again and again yes. through the generation. <laughs> yes, really. So that's why Historia Reed is important. Thank you for your job, Patrick. And well, we want to thank you so very much, yes. Patty, thank you, Janine, for an, coming it's here. It's an honor that you're able to contribute to the Oral History Project. And every little bit from uh, from people, no matter um, how long they lived in Lafayette, um, adds to the knowledge for future generations that have no idea, really, how how the people lived day to day. It's so important. So we want to thank you for sharing your memories with us, and we really appreciate giving us your time. Well, thank you, you so very much, both of you, for your thank interest, you. too. If there's <laughs> anything you want to uh, show us in, you know, in the future, and we make copies of it, or we just want to have as much that you want to share okay. with us. Well, I'll probably be telling you about my grandchildren <laughs> and children. I'm sure they're doing fine. Oh, they are doing okay. very well. Very good. And speaking of horses, I went to the Kentucky Derby with my husband. We oh. swaps the California horse won. What was that, 1955? Wow. And uh tell you something fun. <laughs> Stuff.